Tonight, once again, I couldn't close my eyes. A strange, chilling sensation lingered, refusing to leave me. So, I've decided to share the story unfolding in my life with you all. Especially those like me in the past, who didn't believe in ghosts. It all started in May dot 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 AT that time. I was living in a row of 40 rooms rented out to students, but the scorching weather made it unbearable. Hence, I decided to find a new place to stay. Due to my night job, I lived alone. After two weeks, I found a room not far from the previous one, in a dilapidated row of five single rooms sharing a common restroom. My room was at the front, with a large apple tree covering the tin roof. I chose it immediately upon arrival, not knowing until later that it was previously rented by a couple who ran a business together. Unfortunately, the husband had a fatal accident, so the wife returned to their hometown to bury him. As you know, living alone means minimal cooking, so my belongings were quite simple and dwindled after three trips. When the landlady opened the door to my room, I was pleased to find it cool. It was around p.m., and the room was approximately 12 square meters, with the previous tenant's belongings cleared out except for a bed, a bamboo mat, and a mirror hanging on the wall behind the door. Initially, I planned to dispose of the mat, but since it seemed new, I decided to keep it and washed it later from early June to July 13th. Everything seemed normal. I would go to work at night and return to play Dota, read news, or watch movies. I even had some nightmares but would wake up without remembering anything. Everything might have continued as usual if I hadn't made a foolish decision dot dot dot. A.T. was to move the mirror behind the door to use it as a coat hanger, a decision that I now deeply regret. As I removed the mirror, I was startled to find behind it a strange red-colored talisman filled with countless inscriptions. Feeling uncomfortable, I tore it apart and threw it into the trash bin. As soon as I tore the talisman, I felt a chilling sensation running down my spine. The mirror slipped from my hand and shattered. Since I never believed in ghosts, I shrugged it off as a normal occurrence. That night, after bathing, I went out with a friend for drinks and returned home late, slightly intoxicated knowing that I had the next day off. Upon returning home, I collapsed onto my bed, intending to sleep until noon the next day. But, as I began to doze off, I felt as though something was pulling me upwards, and my head started spinning. At first, I thought it was due to the alcohol, but soon, not only was I being pulled upwards, but I also heard the sound of children laughing and a woman crying. Fully awake now, I reached down to touch the mat and felt a chilling sensation, as if someone had poured water on it. I sat up, trying to regain my composure, but there was nothing to be seen. I turned on my laptop and stayed awake until morning on Sunday mornings. Everyone around slept in, so I had to wait until a.m. for someone to come out and brush their teeth. I timidly inquired and learned that the mat belonged to an unfortunate couple. Immediately, I tore the mat into pieces and burned it in front of my room, thinking that the husband didn't want me to sleep on it, hence he sought to reclaim it. Little did I know, I had committed a fatal mistake, and the husband was just another victim. And true hell was about to reveal itself, because of the events that transpired, I couldn't bring myself to return home and my colleague who offered me temporary accommodation was oblivious to what had occurred. Everyone had gone to bed. So I took out my phone to continue writing for everyone to understand. I don't know what others might think, but until recently, I always thought bamboo mats were imported from China... Dot 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 as I lit the fire to burn the small pieces of the mat, I muttered apologies. It was like a way to calm my troubled mind. The fire didn't burn brightly, as I was afraid the landlady would scold me, so it flickered in shades of green and red, which was eerie even in broad daylight. I was quite frightened at that moment. I wanted to move out, but I had already paid three months' rent in advance and hadn't found another room yet. 
After the burning, I immediately called the uncle living next door and briefly explained the situation from the previous night. Speaking of uncles, my mother had ten siblings in the old days. People had many children. Among them, three were fortune tellers and ritual practitioners. I didn't trust two of them much, but there was one uncle from a remote village who was famous. He used to live in the city, but according to his wife, he moved back to the countryside to live a simple life. It was said that he received assistance from someone up there. Over the phone, he warned me to be careful this month, as there might be a threat to my life. Perhaps the deceased man's soul had just been disturbed, hence the talisman on the door. He also instructed me to wait three more days for him to bring a protective talisman to be careful, as I had noble help, so even if it was an unjust soul, it couldn't harm me. Hearing this, I felt somewhat reassured when night fell. I went to bed early, partly because I was tired from staying up late the night before, and partly because I was scared. I was in a daze, sleeping until around a.m. to 1.30 a.m. When I heard a cat meowing on the roof, its claws scratching down, which was quite uncomfortable. It was strange because the landlady had four dogs, and they would bark wildly whenever someone passed by with a motorcycle or urinated inappropriately at night. Yet tonight, not a single bark was heard, only the meowing of a cat. I was genuinely terrified. I thought, could that wretched soul have returned, even after I returned the mat to him? After pondering for a moment, I grabbed a broom and banged it hard on the foam roof, causing the cat's scratching to cease. But in its place, I heard another sound, the sound of a child crying, similar to what I heard last night. Because I was stubborn, I became annoyed and grabbed a mosquito swatter, turned on the light, and opened the door, determined to confront whatever it was. Stepping out of the room, what greeted me was the sight of three pairs of glowing green eyes staring at me intently. What scared me the most was that they were standing right where I had burned the mat at noon. Shaking, I quickly turned off the wall light, and as I turned back, the three damned cats had disappeared. I went back inside, turning on every light I could find, and stayed awake until morning. It was only a few kilometers from my place to the office, but I always walked slowly, making sure to maintain a cautious and vigilant appearance. Dot, 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 as I was lost in thought, suddenly I heard a faint whisper in my head, a child's voice saying, Can I be friends with you? My heart pounded violently, but I maintained my composure and said, Who are you? Show yourself. To my surprise, the child's voice was replaced by the sound of a woman crying, lamenting, Why did you do that? I want to see my husband again. Out of reflex, I turned my head in all directions, but I was met with nothing but the empty road. Then the crying abruptly ceased, leaving me standing alone in the silence of the night. I made it to the office safely, but my mind was consumed by the events of the past few days. I couldn't concentrate on my work, and I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched when I returned home that evening. I found a small talisman lying outside my door, one that I hadn't seen before. It was unlike any I had seen, made of white cloth with red characters written on it. I wasn't sure what to make of it, but I took it inside and placed it on my bedside table. That night, I slept with one eye open, my mind racing with fear and uncertainty. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was lurking just beyond my sight waiting for the right moment to strike dot 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 as dawn broke. I awoke to find the talisman missing from my bedside table. In its place was a single word scrawled hastily on a scrap of paper. Leave. I knew then that I couldn't stay in that room any longer. Whatever malevolent force had taken up residence, there was not something I could contend with. I packed my belongings hastily leaving behind the room that had become a prison of fear even now. As I write these words, I can't shake the feeling that I am being watched, that whatever haunted that room has not finished with me yet. 
I pray that whoever reads this will heed my warning. Do not meddle with forces beyond your understanding, for the consequences can be dire indeed. And if you ever find yourself in a room with a mirror behind the door, for your own sake, leave it be.